afternoon, Your Excellencies. May it please the court. Thank you. My name is Jasmine Ibukasim, and I'm agent for the applicant, the Republic of Alicanto. I will be addressing the first two issues, dealing with intervention and non-disclosure of classified evidence. My co-agent, Roland Sabatez, will be addressing issues three and four, dealing with conduct of Rhodesian soldiers at Camp Tara and extradition. Both my co-agent and I will take 20 minutes each for our presentations, and the applicant has reserved five minutes for rebuttal. Moving to the first issue. We submit that this court declared that Rhodesia's armed unilateral intervention violates international law for two reasons. First, Rhodesia infringed upon Alicantan's sovereignty and violate, violated the United Nations Charter's ban on the use of force. And second, Rhodesia is not justified under any independent humanitarian intervention justification. First, Rhodesia's armed intervention and occupation violates Alicantan's sovereignty and the UN Charter. The Nicaragua v. United States case recognized that non-intervention and the non-use of force are Jus Kogan's norms, as well as customary rules of international law, which impose an obligation on all states to refrain from violating another state's sovereignty and territorial integrity through armed unilateral intervention. Further, Article 2.4 of the Charter explicitly bans all use of force, save three narrow exceptions. First, a state may intervene if the host state consents. Second, the Security Council may lawfully authorize the collective security measure. And third, a state has the right of self-defense. The first exception does not apply here because Alicanto has never consented to Rebizia's intervention. The second exception also does not apply because Rebizia's intervention lacks Security Council authorization as a valid collective security measure. I guess I need to find, are you referring to the revision troops that came in with the UN mandate, or are you referring to an earlier intervention, if you will? Your Excellency, the issue of intervention pertains to revision troops' intervention in Alicanto after the unmorphed mandate was expired. expired. Yes. But did they and not internal. come in under a UN mandate? No. At the time that the UN terminated the UNMORF mandate, prior to that date, Revisia had submitted resolutions to the Security Council mm -hmm. seeking to extend and expand the UNMORF mandate. However, the Security Council rejected both of those resolutions. After that fact, Revisia announced to the international community and proceeded with ferrying in Revisian troops and supplies to Camp Tara without authorization. Was that a mandate a, issued under Chapter 7 or Chapter 6 of the UN Charter? I believe that the, man, the original UNMORF mandate would be issued under Chapter 7 of the UN Charter dealing with se collective security measures. Thanks, continue. The Security Council must authorize a valid collective action through a resolution which, one, identifies the situation as a threat to international peace and security, and two, authorizes all use of force to secure purposes of the resolution. These two requirements can be found under Articles 39 and 42 of the Charter. Here, the Security Council can Second, even if a right to humanitarian intervention exists in customary international law, the situation in Alicanto utterly fails to meet egregious human rights violations of past interventions. Alicanto does not assert that the number of deaths in its territory are insignificant. However, the facts of this case and the evidence do not indicate impending genocide in Alicanto. How many would it take to constitute pending genocide in your opinion? Well, Your Honor, that is a standard which is set by the international community's approval of past interventions. And some, in various cases, the numbers appear to be between close to 100,000 and more. For example, in Rwanda, the number of um, deaths, killings of Tutsis by Hutus was 800,000. In Somalia, it was 300,000 to 500,000. Here, the N NGOs have reported village burnings causing thousands of deaths and various, uh, various number of hundreds of deaths, as well as migration by Dasu to bordering states. That 
I would, I would argue that in this case, that does not present an issue of egregious human rights violations leading, I mean, which can be classified as genocide. The event Revisia refuses this court's request. We respectfully submit that no evidentiary benefit be given to Revisia and that special weight be given to any evidence produced by Alicanto in satisfaction of its burden of proof. What, what's the standard for release of uh, a country's sovereign intelligence uh, requirements uh, to an international body like the UN? Your Honor, there is no standard in positive international law of which I'm aware of. However, the ICJ under Article 34, Paragraph 2 of the ICJ statute would request the evidence from a public international organization such as the United Nations which would assist it in determining a dispute between parties. Furthermore, in this case, the submission of this evidence would be governed by, governed by the Secretary General's Bulletin on Informational Sensitivity, which states that once, a, once the UN obtains evidence from a source state, classification of that evidence would be determined by the UN, determined by the Secretary General, as opposed to that state's national laws. Under that bulletin, paragraph 4.4, the Secretary General may unilaterally declassify that evidence if he deems appropriate. So you're saying that the ICJ has jurisdiction? Yes, Your Honor. They have sufficient power to compel Ravisha to disclose its classified intel? Either to us or to a UN body. Your Honor, we are not saying that this court has the power to compel the evidence. As a matter of fact, Article 49 states that the power does not have power to compel evidence mm -hmm. from an international organization or a party. However, Article 34, subsection 2 states that the court may request the evidence from the international an international organization such as the UN. Furthermore, an international organization such as the UN, which is an organ of the international law, would be able to comply with such a request from the court of its own initiative. And what if the state chooses to uh, disagree with the UN's uh, mandate that some intelligence be uh, released? A state may choose to disagree that its intelligence be released. However, it relinquishes that right once it turns that in evidence over to the Secretary General. In this case, Rebizio was aware of the Secretary General's Bulletin on Informational Sensitivity once it relinquished that evidence. So the UN has the, the evidence in, in its possession. The issue now is whether or not that information can be released. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. The UN inclusivity over the requested intelligence, this court should also reduce Alicanto's standard of proof and give any evidence presented by Alicanto special weight under this court's evidentiary rules. In closing, if this court requests the intelligence from Revisia and Revisia refuses such request, the court should make formal note of such refusal, deny Revisia the right to rely on the evidence either directly or indirectly, afford special weight to any evidence presented by Alicanto, and make inferences favorable to Alicanto's position. In the alternative, we request that this court declare the Secretary General may lawfully and unilaterally declassify Rebizia's evidence under the Bulletin on Informational Sensitivity. Procedurally, what mechanism would we use to change um, the burden of the parties based on their presumed uh, reluctance to turn over the evidence? You want us to draw negative inferences from the fact that they don't give us the evidence that we've requested, correct? I, I would rephrase that, Your Honor. I would say that Article 49 of the ICJ statute permits this court to draw inferences favorable to the victim of international law. Here, that victim is Alicanto. If Revisia refuses to produce its evidence, the court should draw an inference from that in favor of Alicanto's position that that dis refusal to disclose that evidence is based on the fact that the intelligence does not support Rebusia's intervention.